Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and I don't get why Marvel doesn't use the Hulk to advertise more. He's basically one big banner. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Of Life and Land, a base building, city building kind of game developed by Kurzavan, man, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and published by Kurzavan and Metaroot. Released in early access and selling for $25. Okay, so this game does have a little bit of a story, something about some kind of big kingdom or civilization or something, not needing small villages for stability, but this random guy wants to change that for some reason, and he sends you off to start a village in the fringes for some reason. And there you go. That's about it. But... Whatever, the story isn't really the reason why we play these games, is it? So it's not that big of a deal. Would it have been nice to have a little bit more story or depth or whatever? Sure. But from my experience, stories tend to create a distraction from the rest of the gameplay, so I'm not too s upset about its lack of depth, plot, or engagement. The only thing I'm really interested in here is the game itself. I've played a lot of games like this, Banished probably being one of my favorites, City Skylines, RimWorld, SimCity. I know RimWorld doesn't really count, but you know, still. And I could keep going. But, uh, so you know, here's hoping that we find ourselves in another good one. So, okay, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, shall we? Up first for the positives is the stability. The game's stability is pretty awesome, I, I think. It's kind of hard to tell. Basically, the game never crashed, never froze, never dropped frames on me, you know, and that's pretty much all I look for in stability. As far as I can tell, the game isn't broken, so, yeah, there's a good thing. It played very smoothly. Next up for the positives is the gameplay, which will also be in the negatives, so keep that in mind going forward. But basically, when it comes to the gameplay itself and its mechanics and its, and its controls and whatnot, it's not bad. And I mean, it's legitimately not bad. Placing buildings feels right, the roads are smartly done, as is the descriptors and the jobs each building produces, the tooltip bubbles that pop up, the people go on about their own accomplishing, you know, they go about on their own accomplishing tasks and interacting with each other, sorry. Uh, and they interact with the wildlife and the environment, which brings me to another really cool aspect of the gameplay. Everything is influenced and interact with each other. The animals will interact with people and vice versa. The terrain will be affected by what you do. Like, for instance, you can place a dam on a riverbed. I also love how when you go to build a road over a river, your people will automatically build a bridge for you. Animals will steal food from you and supplies from you depending on what they need, which is also kind of a pain, but still a cool mechanic. People can randomly join you, and once you build this thing called a community center, you can basically forcefully bring in more people to your village one at a time. There's a plethora of resources and upgraded resources that are needed for different things, simple menus for seeing how much you have, how much you need, and what is being produced. Every building you construct has different boosts you can activate that increase productivity and requires resources to maintain, so when you're in a pinch you can increase resource production and hopefully save yourself. You can advance to the next era or stage or whatever you want to call it, and when you do, and when it happens automatically, which I don't know if it's based on population or time, but anyway, when it does, it gives you more advanced building types to construct, unlocking more advanced resources and commodities, as well as different game mechanics. You can also explore different zones outside of your own, new maps basically, and you can establish villages there after you've explored them. So you could end up having multiple villages all under, all at once under your, your purview. It's an interesting mechanic to be sure. Overall, in terms of a city builder game, its overall gameplay mechanics are fairly solid. Everything works the way you'd expect and everything falls into place the way you want it to, even if it can get a bit confusing at times. The next positive point is the sound effects, which will also be in the negatives. The music is really nice, it blends into the background well, it's subtle and theme fitting. Whenever you happen to hear sound effects, they sound on point, and there's minimal ambiance and no voice acting. And that's all I got for the positives. Keep in mind, the game is in early access, so a lot of this is subject to change. Now on to the negatives, but before that, please support the growth of my channel. It's hard for smaller YouTubers like me to get noticed in the big wide world, and so any help you can provide would really help. Liking, commenting, and sharing are all awesome, but sharing my content online and spreading the word of my videos is what really helps me out tremendously. So please consider helping me out today. Thank you. So the first negative is the graphics. They aren't great, now they aren't bad, mind you, but they aren't great. I think my biggest problem here is the lack of detail and good color contrasting. It's really hard to tell things apart here. The detail I might be able to forgive, because uh, you know when you're looking at the overall style of the game, they clearly have a particular art style they want to use, which is fine. But the color contrasting is, is where it really gets me. When you want to place a building down, it's supposed to show you like an area of effect for resources around it that are going to be affected by that building, like trees for a lumberjack or whatever. But the color contrasting is so badly done in my opinion, it, it's just it's too difficult to figure out where to place things, where to find things, and so on. It makes playing the game more annoying and, and just overall more difficult, trying to find out where you want to put things and if they're even going to work the way you want them to. Next up is the sound quality. As I mentioned earlier, the music is really nice, and whenever you get to hear sound effects, they sound good. But there isn't a whole lot there in terms of ambiance or the sound effects. It's rare to hear them. You'll hear crickets and birds every now and then, but it's mostly just music you're listening to, which can be kind of disappointing for some people. It was for me. Up next for negatives is the user interface. 
First off, it starts you off with this overall scale, the overall scale and size of everything being way too small. I have perfect vision, and even I was struggling to keep up with how small everything is. Now, luckily you can change it in the menu, but still, it was kind of a slap in the face at first. Then, you look at this. I mean, just look at the user interface here, and, and I mean, look at that map! What's up with that map? I mean, I'm sorry, but it's kind of ugly. And also, you can't even click on it to reposition your camera. It does, it, in other words, it doesn't really serve much purpose, but that's not all. Do you see the random menus around on my screen? Some of them just won't go away. I mean, you can exit them out, sure, but there's no, like, I can't, I can't, like, they're, they're too big, basically. They're too big, they take up too much of the screen. You can kind of reposition them, but not really. And hell, if you look on the right side of the screen, the map is literally overlapping the damn quests menu. When you go to build something, the menu stays there, which is annoying because it blocks your vision and makes it harder for you to see things. Sure, you can minimize it, but most games, after you click to build something, that disappears. That doesn't happen here. When you click on the menus to examine different things or people or buildings, it does look kind of awkward and confusing. The game does have tooltips, though, so at least there's that, but I mean... I don't know, in my opinion, the user interface just looks kind of annoying and, and it's a little confusing and it's just a little ugly in my opinion. The next negative is the gameplay. Now, I don't know if some of it's broken or if I just didn't notice it or if it's badly designed or if it didn't teach me how to use it well enough or maybe it's just unfinished, but, well, see here, I, I've been here for over three years now in-game. I came in with ten people, four joined me, and now I have eight. Because they died! Why? I have no idea. I mean, sure, it tells me how they died, but from my perspective, they should have been just fine. I had plenty of firewood and fire to warm themselves and homes and food, so why did they die? In the beginning of the game, it'll take your people forever to do anything. I had to wait so long for them just to build a field, let alone homes, food gathering hubs, and other resources. And unlike a lot of games like this, there is no way to set a priority or make sure they work towards a simple thing. It was really frustrating to have to sit there for so long for them to build some simple things, and then they just, half of them died. I, I, I lost half my population. I went from 10 to 5. And now I knew I couldn't sustain a village on that, so I started a new game. The exact same thing happened again, only this time I lost 6 people, leaving me with 4. Again, I started again, and this time I approached it very differently, completely ignoring the tutorial. And I managed to barely survive. I, I couldn't figure out what was going on, but my people just kept dying and they weren't building the things that they needed to to survive. And then when they did finally build what they needed, they weren't working them and they still kept dying. I was just baffled. At one point, I actually got an achievement for surviving two years and it's like, yeah, I really needed that. Thank you. Thanks, game. That was... Uh, it, I can understand why you've got that achievement here. In five years of in-game time, I was only at eight people. Like, it never increased. But I had to stop the death of frost and hunger. I, I, I finally was able to do it, but I'm not even sure how I did it. But after five years, still no babies, no more people wanting to join, still not enough food. Like, I just don't understand what exactly is going on wrong here. And remember those boosts I told you about earlier that expand your production value? Well, you can't mass click them. You have to manually activate each one, which can get a little annoying. And then you you know, add on to that, you don't really have any shortcut keys, or if you do, I don't know what they are, so you literally gotta manually click everything. And then you've got the amount of time it takes people to do literally anything. I just don't understand the programming here. I mean, they have jobs once the buildings are built. Okay, fine, they gotta do those jobs. I get that. But isn't there a way to just assign people to be builders? No? So that's why it takes them four years to build four tents? Tents, not houses, tents. Should take 10 minutes, not 10 months. Now I'm exaggerating, but it does take them a really long time to build something as simple as a tent or a field. It, it was just ridiculous. So because of how slow and inefficient the AI is, it takes them forever to do anything, and this right here, what you're about to see, will be most of your gameplay. This is going to be the majority of your gameplay, at least in the beginning. Now to be fair, when you end up getting 30 or 40 people in your village, things do speed up quite a bit. But if you weren't able to figure out what was going on with your food shortage or your or your your cold problems, then, you know, good luck keeping them because they're just going to keep dying over and over again. I mean, it was so hard in the beginning of this game, unfairly so, and I just had to point that out. Be prepared to start over again and again because of how confusing and unknown a lot of aspects of this game there are. Alright, so I gotta move off of gameplay. Moving on to the tutorial. In my opinion, it's absolute garbage. I am a stickler for tutorials. If you're a, if you're a frequent visitor of my videos, you know this. First of all, it's one of those annoying tutorials that just gives you pages upon pages, paragraphs upon paragraphs of text that they want you to read and study on your own. I'm never doing that. I don't like doing that. That's no fun. I'm not going to study for a video game. And then it's got little quests. Now, this is these are supposed to be what teaches you the game. 
right? Like this is where the real tutorial is. But be careful, because if you follow those quests and you follow these little tutorials here, you will die every single time. That or it will take you years to build anything, which it already does, but still. It took my third game, the quote unquote most successful run I had, and I skipped the tutorial and those missions completely on that run and focused on what I knew would be a problem, food and warmth. Screw the tutorial trying to confuse me and give me pointless little objectives. I don't need them if they're just going to get my people killed every run. So the tutorial sucked and I hated it. It barely helped at all and in the end it got my people killed, which is the opposite of what a tutorial is supposed to do, which is why it's in the negatives. By the end, I really had no real idea if anything I was doing was making a difference. No real idea of what I was supposed to be doing and what was going on, which is the fault of the tutorial and the game. And last but not least for the negatives is the price tag. With no voice acting, with below average graphics, with minimal sound effects, with confusing gameplay and user interface, this game, in my opinion, is just not worth $25. $15, maybe $20 at most. I mean, it's early access, and it's confusing and a bit awkward. Why charge so much? It doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so that's all I gotta say about the game. What are my final thoughts? Well, honestly, the game is not the worst city builder that I've ever played, for sure. It does have its good moments and its bad moments, but it's also early access, so what do you expect? But for $25, no, not for an early access investment. I don't think it's good enough for that much money. Is it a good game? Well, I think it's an average city builder. I mean, sure, if you're desperate for a brand new one, then this one's perfectly fine to play. It's not doing anything inherently wrong. Overall, it's just kind of confusing and awkward and needlessly difficult. I personally would recommend waiting until a big update comes out or there's a price discount, but it's not the worst game ever. It's perfectly average, in my opinion. It does get annoying that my villagers would rather collect sticks than fruit when they're starving, or that they'd be too focused on mining stone instead of building tents to live in when they're homeless, but a few patches to improve their priorities could easily fix that. The UI is kind of annoying and ugly, but the music is nice, and with no voice acting and with the game clearly being incomplete, well, that's, way, that's why I feel the way that I do. Don't get me wrong, a lot of these issues might be because I just don't know how to play the game, but again, that's the game's fault. The tutorial only got me killed in the first two playthroughs, and it didn't teach me the ins and outs of the game. It didn't teach me how to manage resources, and as far as I know, I can't. It didn't teach me how to prioritize things, so as far as I know, I can't. It didn't tell, t tell me about births, or visitors, or exploring new areas, or taxes, or dirtiness, or anything. If it did, then it was so far down the line in the tutorial questing that I just died before I ever reached those tutorials. I hate to be so negative about this game, but after five years in-game time, I was only able to get one new person to join because it took them three years to build the community center. And with multiple farms, mills, hunting and fishing lodges, my food storage never really increased despite my population going down. My people still struggling to make ends meet even though I've built all the things available to me with boosts and population going down. Like, there's literally no reason logically in my mind why my people are still struggling to survive, and considering I've spent so much time on one run through and one playthrough in one village, and barely made any progress, it just doesn't look very good for the future of my playthrough. I mean, is this game doing anything new or innovative? Something no one else is doing? Is it different from anything else? I mean, other than the world is kind of connected thing, which didn't make any obvious impact to me, no, no it's not. So, yeah, I think it's an average game, I think it's not bad, but it's not good, and I think that it could be a little bit cheaper in the price tag. That's about it. So, that's all the time I got for this video, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So, until then, I bid you all farewell.